Well, hi there, folks. I just finally got myself a Hobby King Bixler. Now, it's been around for about 10 years, I think, in various forms. This is the Bixler 1.1 version 2. And I hadn't realised when I bought it just what a popular model it was. Anyway, this is what you get. Great big box with a lot of bits in it. Now, you can buy this in various forms. They call this ARF, almost ready to fly. Well, you've certainly got a bit of gluing and putting together before to do before you can actually do that. They do another version that is much more assembled. First thing I noticed was no instructions in the box. Well that's fair enough because a lot of models nowadays you have to go online and download a PDF. So I did loads of googling. There are one or two pretty good videos on there telling you how to put this together but there's also a great deal of stuff that I've discovered they didn't tell you. Well I've been flying RC planes for quite a few years now, built quite a few models so I wasn't particularly daunted by what I found in there. Although if you'd been a total beginner, the online instructions that I did find were absolutely next to useless. And I've started building it and it was pretty obvious to me that there's quite a lot of stuff that I couldn't find online. There are some good videos, but there's stuff that just wasn't covered. So that's what I'm going to go through with this video. I've started building. So here are my tips. Hope you might find them useful. As you can see, I've already started putting it together. Now a lot of stuff is pretty obvious. This didn't come with servos so I had to buy some. You do need a Y lead and of course you've got to consider the fact that you need a very long servo lead to actually get through to inside the body here. Now you can buy extensions. I'm pretty lucky because I already had a Y lead and just by chance it's actually long enough to go right through and connect both of those. That's the first thing. A lot of the stuff is pretty obvious like connecting the horns, glued in the servos with a couple of blobs of hot glue. Incidentally, I should mention, I'm using a mixture of hot glue gun and Yoohoo Pour to put this together. Glue gun's fine for a few little things, but it goes off very quickly, 60 seconds. To stick the two halves of fuselage together, I'm going to use Yoohoo Pour. That gives me about five minutes to play. So, what did I want to mention? You get six of these little tiny rings. Now, no one tells you where to put them. But you've got, I put a blob of hot glue gun on those, making sure the hole was clear. They go on there to reinforce the fixing point for the wing. That's the first thing that I couldn't find any info on. You get six, the other two go in here and I've already pre-glued the other two in there so that it'll make it easier to us to put together. As I say, fixing control horns, pretty obvious. Not quite so obvious which ones go where. On the elevator, Looking from the back here, it's on the left hand side down. So on the rudder, looking from the back, it's on the right hand side. But the most tricky, important thing I couldn't find info on was, it's pretty obvious that you glue the servos into the fuselage this way, because there's a cut out there and two little slots. Wasn't sure whether these should cross over, they do on some models, but it seems quite happy this way. One thing I didn't notice until I'd actually glued this in, fortunately I managed to get, the, get it out afterwards, was these control wires here are actually different lengths. Couldn't find any mention of that anywhere. But I discovered it is important because when you come to assemble the tail, you'll find if you put them in the wrong way around, they won't quite reach the control horns on the, on the control surfaces. So it's actually important to get these the right way around. Now, as you can see there, the one that goes to the top is going to be rudder. And that is slightly longer than the one that goes to the bottom for the elevator. Now, if you glued it all together, that might be a bit of a pain in the butt because you'd have to start trimming it off and chopping these down a bit, which wouldn't be very easy because you'd have to trim these and re-bend the end of the control wires there. Anyway, I think I've got that right now, but that was one thing that I did struggle with and give a lot of thought to. I mentioned you get lots of bits and pieces. Stuff like this is pretty obvious. Once you glue in the servos, just the question of hooking these in and so on. But there are other bits in it. This is the motor mount. I don't know whether you just slot it in the hole or whether you glue it in or what you're supposed to do with it. This little thing here, pretty obvious really, slots in here because the main spar is detachable. Hence you've got these reinforcements here to stop it ripping out through the foam. That was pretty obvious and that way up so that you're pulling upwards against this plywood insert. They've obviously given this a lot of thought over 10 years and it's it's a very well thought out kit I must say. 
apart from the fact, as I say, that it would have been nice to read somewhere. I didn't think to measure these, they look the same to me, but that tiny difference makes a difference when you're trying to connect up. Right, the motor mount and the speed controller. Now it doesn't come with a motor. They recommend a 2212 1900 or 1950 kV motor. Couldn't find one of those very easily and I happen to know that this particular motor, which is a 2212 60 2200 kV, there's plenty of packages online that will do this motor and this speed controller about 15 quid, which is an exceedingly good deal. So I went for that. And because it's still a 2212, the mount holes on here are in fact in the same position. Now, as you notice, they're slightly offset and it actually fits on with the motor on the fiberglass face. Now, the other thing you'll notice is, I discovered when I came to fit this, goes in a slot here, like so. The idea being that these wires will run down here and along here in the fuselage. You soon discover actually when you put a motor on here that the wires aren't going to actually slide very easily around this. So what I've done here, drilled a hole just through there into this, still very strong, it's fiberglass, strong thick bit of fiberglass, and now beautifully the wires will come out through the back, straight down there, straight to my speed controller. You may also notice that I've actually had to solder in a couple of inches of extra wire there to my speed controller because otherwise it would have been too far back for me to be able to connect the battery through the hatch here. So that is a consideration. And on that subject, I mentioned the Y lead, which conveniently for me does actually fit so that it will go through, but without extending the wire on the Y lead, there's no way either that that would go from here, right down here to the receiver. So I've also had to, had to add, soldered in in other words, an additional three inches or so on the connector here. Of course you can buy extenders for that so if you're not if you're not much keen on soldering that will do that. Having said that you're going to have to solder on the bullet connectors for speed controllers and if you're totally new to this gadget and you you set this up and you plug in your speed controller and you find the motor shaft is rotating the wrong way the solution is you unplug two of these and reverse the leads and that reverses the motor but you you might know that. Maybe you don't know it. If you're a total beginner, you wouldn't know it. Anyway, this is all set up and sorted in. Set these up. Don't forget to center these. I say I'm not, I haven't gone into great detail about that. It's worth checking out Andrew Newton's video. But obviously, before you connect these and glue them, make sure you've centered it and the control arms in the right place. That covers that for the minute. I'm getting closer to the position where I can glue this together, I'd say. Well, it's getting to the closing stages. The final part of the jigsaw turned up. That's the receiver. Turned up from Amazon yesterday. And it's all hooked up here to make sure it's gonna work before I finally glue the thing together. As you can see, ailerons are connected and working, even the right way. Elevator is connected and working. Rudder is connected and working. And the motor mount is half glued in with hot glue. Speed control is in as well there. So now let's take a closer look at a couple of other things I've done before I glue this together. Right, so what have I done? First thing to mention is, I mentioned this little piece of wood here, which is designed to slot in here so that you can put bolts through and make the wings removable. Decided I'm gonna glue the wings in anyway, so I've done away with that to which end I didn't really need those either. That's one thing. I, managed, I had partially glued it in but I managed to prise it out. Just extra weight if you're not going to use it. What else have I done? I've used scotch crystal tape to fix these inside so there are no loose wires dangling around. I put a bit of velcro there to support that to stop that flopping around. Partially glued in the motor mount. I mentioned that I fed the wires through there. They go very neatly through there. 
The other more important thing that I've done is when I first unpacked it I thought that these hinges looked a bit fragile you're just relying on the foam so I've actually put strong tape along there on both sides so that's never going to come off. I've done that on there and on both sides of the ailerons too. The other thing I've done with the scotch crystal tape while I've got that out is I've put it on these leading edges which looks very nice and smooth it's gone on beautifully and we'll just stop it getting little dings when it's landing in in the scrub and so on and finally I've got to glue these little magnets in place that hold the hatch and the cockpit of course these other things have got to be popped on I'm not sure whether I'm going to glue that or how I'm going to fit it but I think I'm actually ready now to take that brave step and glue the two halves of the fuselage together and as I said I'm going to use Yoohoo Paw because it at least give me two or three minutes of playtime whereas hot glue would just be wham too fast so wish me luck next time you see this it should be in one piece a flyable model here we go right well here it is and what a beautiful looking plane that is I must say it's a piece of artwork anyway so how did it go first thing to say is even though I used Yoohoo Paw Gluing the two halves of the fuselage together was a bit tricky because I started gluing the two halves of the fuselage together from the nose end but then once I'd got to the tail I realised it was about an eighth of an inch out. I don't know if you can see it but this, it's about an eighth of an inch out here because obviously this stretches a little bit and it's a fairly soft material so I think one lesson I learned was if ever I'm going to do it again I would start gluing probably from the centre section trying to keep an eye on whether the two halves were symmetrical not a huge deal really and while I've got it up this way a couple of things I've done a bit of that scotch crystal tape along here plus I've also put a bit of reinforcing tape along the bottom of the fuselage here which will act as a skid and obviously give it a bit more strength but having said that, I've decided, as I'm going to use it for FPV, that I'm going to fit an undercarriage, and that just turned up yesterday. So I may stick a quick picture at the end of the completed job with the undercarriage. What else to say? As far as this bit goes, decided not to glue it. I've actually put a cocktail stick through there, a couple of rubber bands, so that I can lift that off easily. That was easy enough. Gluing the wings in is also quite tricky, because even with your hoop or you only maybe get 30 seconds to manoeuvre, once it's in there it's in. So they're not quite both in at the same depth, but it's you're talking a couple of millimetres, not critical. But that was basically, that was okay. Everything else was pretty straightforward I'd say. As far as in here goes, the receiver's there. One antenna that way, one antenna that way. Not in position, as I say, because I've got a glue a reinforcing block in for this. I've also put a little bulkhead there because with the 2200 milliamp battery tucked up there, balances quite nicely. So, I'll show you my FPV bit. I made another little insert here in foam board that will hook in there. In much the same shape as the cockpit. That hooks in there, a little magnet on it too. This is on Velcro, so I can melt one of the quite a few transmitters I've got. Can't peel it off now, otherwise it's going to pull it apart. But that sits there really nicely, and I think should do a great job for FPV. Obviously battery connection there. I'm going to give it a separate battery, and a 600 milliamp 3S can sit on that. But that should work very well. Okay then, well there it is, undercarriage fitted and ready for a maiden. Let's take a closer look. Right, so how do you fit the undercarriage? This is the only instructions you get, which just tell you basically to cut a slot 241 millimetres from the tip of the nose. Just cut a slot with a sharp blade and then glue in the mounting bracket that comes with it. So this actually clips in and out, which is quite useful. What I've done on the inside is, whether you can see it or not, I don't know, I glued a shaped block of polystyrene on the inside there, 
for reinforcement so that it can't whack it too much and tear out that way plus there's one behind it but you can't really see but I just cut a piece out that's shaped from a piece of polystyrene board so that should be strong enough fitting the tail wheel is straightforward enough just a question of cutting a slot what I did was heat up the end of an old hacksaw blade and just very carefully melt the hole in that's absolutely perfect I'm a bit disappointed that it won't actually rotate because on the ground it, don't, it won't seem to steer using rudder when taking off but that remains to be seen what else can I say if I was building another one another lesson I have learned is cut away some of this foam here before you stick the two halves together because to fit the receiver in tidily and keep it well enough away from the speed controller you do need a bit of space in here so it would make sense before you glue the two halves together to increase the size of that orifice there but it's not too difficult to hack it out and the receiver here and the speed controller are both held in place by a bit of velcro stick on velcro stuff try to keep a bit of space between the speed controller and the receiver it's always good practice if you can so as I said I've had to hack away to get that tucked in and also so that I could get these antenna in a nice position here what else oh yes COG they recommend a 2200 3S with that tucked up there it's almost perfect on the line of the reinforcing strut there it just needs a tiny little bit of lead to give it a nose down attitude but it's not going to take much to actually put that down because you can see it's almost balancing perfectly level in fact it's slightly nose high but that's it next video you see is going to be the maiden and let's hope it goes okay i feel much happier having an undercarriage because i hate hand launching i like to have both hands on the control when i take off especially and if it's fpv you need both hands on the controls when you take off but that's it for now don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and maybe even hit subscribe if you want to see the maiden or some of the other stuff on my channel lots of rc plane stuff plus paragliding paramotoring sailing wildlife oh, billions of action camera tests too thanks for watching stay safe hopefully i'll catch you all again soon and make sure you watch out for the maiden